The plot below is a Lissajous figure created with the parametric equations x of t equals a cosine bt and y of t equals c sine dt. So notice how the x-coordinates of our figure are controlled by the cosine function and the y-coordinates of our figure are controlled by the sine function. So we should already be familiar with the basic cosine function graphed here in red as well as the basic sine function graphed here in black. Notice both functions have a maximum function value of positive one and a minimum function value of negative one, which means by determining the maximum and minimum x value of our figure and the maximum and minimum y value of our figure, we should be able to determine the value of a and c where the absolute value of a would be the amplitude of our cosine function and the absolute value of c would be the amplitude of the sine function. So to help us determine the value of a, we'll project our figure onto the x-axis. So if we project this onto the x-axis, notice how the minimum x value is negative four and the maximum x value would be positive four. That means the amplitude of our cosine function must be four and since we're using a positive value for a, a equals four. So we know that x of t must equal four times cosine of bt, and now to find c, we'll project our figure onto the y-axis to determine the minimum and maximum y-value. So if we project this onto the y-axis, notice how the minimum y-value, which occurs twice, would be negative three, and the maximum y-value, which occurs twice, would be positive three, which means the amplitude of our cosine function must be three and again, because we're using a positive value for c, c is three. So we know that y of t equals three times sine of dt. Now from here we'll determine the value of b and d. These values are not unique, but their ratio is. So let's just assume we want to trace this entire figure using the interval for t from zero to two pi radians. So we'll use this interval for t to find a value of b and d that would work, and then we'll talk about why these values are not unique. To do this, we'll trace our figure and determine how many cycles of the cosine function and how many cycles of the sine function it takes to trace our complete figure. Before we do this, though, let's find the point on our figure when t equals zero. When t is zero, x would be four times cosine zero, which would be four, and y would be equal to three times sine zero, which would be zero. So when t is zero, we'd be at the point four comma zero here. Notice how if we start here, in order to complete our trace, we'll have to backtrack, and therefore we can think of this as tracing it twice, because it will have one overlap of our figure. So we'll first focus on the x values, which are controlled by four cosine of bt, before we do this though, let's take a look at the basic cosine function. Notice when the input is zero, we have a maximum function value, and it's not until the function value returns to the maximum function value that we have one complete cycle of our cosine function. So notice how we're starting at an x value of positive four. So when we trace this, when we return to positive four, this represents one complete cycle of our cosine function. So let's go ahead and begin tracing. The orientation would be in this direction here. Notice here we're at a minimum x value of negative four. Remember we're focusing only on the x values, but from here we have to backtrack. So we'd backtrack in this direction, and notice how we do return back to an x value of positive four. So this represents one cycle of our cosine function. Notice how we've traced this piece twice. As we keep tracing in this direction, notice how we go out to an x value of negative four, the minimum x value, but to keep it consistent, we'll retrace this path so that the figure has been traced twice. So if we retrace this and return back to the x value of positive four, we've just completed our second cycle of the cosine function, and therefore for using this interval for t, the period of our cosine function would be two pi divided by two, 
and therefore b, the coefficient of t, would be two. So we have x of t equals four times cosine of two t, again, because we're using this interval for t. And now we'll trace our figure again, again with overlap, and determine how many cycles of the sine function we need to trace our figure, and now we'll be focusing on the y values. Before we do this, though, let's take a look back at the basic sine function. Notice how when the input is zero, the function value is zero, and it has to return to a function value of zero not once but twice for one complete cycle. So here we're starting at a y value of zero, and the second time we return to a y value of zero, we have one complete cycle of our sine function. So we'll begin tracing. We have a y value of zero here once, we keep tracing. Now we begin to backtrack, and notice how here we've returned to the y value of zero a second time, which represents one cycle of our sine function, and we keep tracing. And we're back to a y value of zero here for the first time of our second cycle, so we keep tracing. And now we have a y value of zero for a second time, so we have two complete cycles of our sine function. We keep tracing. And now we backtrack. We're back to a y value of zero once. And then finally, we're back to a y value again a second time to complete our third cycle of our sine function. And therefore, with this interval for t, the period would have to be two pi divided by three, and therefore the coefficient of t is three and therefore y of t equals three sine three t. And I mentioned earlier, the values of b and d are not unique as long as the ratio remains the same. Meaning as long as the cosine function completes two cycles in the same interval that the sine function completes three cycles, the parametric equations would still create the same figure. The interval for t would change but it would still be the same figure. But I think it's easier to just use interval for t, which is the period of the basic sine and cosine function, to determine the most obvious values of b and d. I hope you found this helpful.